Should I declare bankruptcy? Now you'll notice I'm smiling, of course, when I'm saying that because in my business career, I've almost gone bankrupt twice. In May of 2000, I opened up my one of my businesses in 2002 by, well, I was leading up to that time. By May of 2002, I had $54,000 charged up in my credit cards. And that was the first time I spoke to my one attorney um, about going bankrupt. I didn't, but I almost did. By 2005, I had all the debt almost paid off. Then of course, I'm in the mortgage industry. So mortgage lending is what I do, dealing of course with real estate. Then of course, the mortgage meltdown happened, the great recession happened, the whole market crumbled, whatever. I went from 54 grand in credit card debt, all paid off, almost debt free, money in the bank, to, now again, I almost did bankruptcy, but I didn't. Um, fast forward, 05, I'm in a great position. By 2009, March of 2009 to be exact, I was back to $600,000 in credit card debt. No equity in my house, ripped all that out, lost all my money, had just living check to check to check, barely paying bills and everything like that. That was the second time in my business career I faced bankruptcy. Didn't go bankrupt, but looked heavily at it. So the question becomes, should I declare bankruptcy? What, what kind of determines whether you should take that step or not? Now, I don't think it's a step you should take without looking inward and asking a lot of questions. So with this video, we're gonna start with first identifying why are we in that position in the first place? Secondly, we're gonna give a list of questions as to determining which way do we go? Do we go bankrupt? Do we not go bankrupt? The third thing we're gonna look at is post-bankruptcy. How do we have to adjust our lifestyle, living expenses and habits such that we don't find ourselves back into that pit again down the road. So those are the three things we're going to address today. Why or how did we get here? What's what's What are questions we can analyze or ask to see if we should go bankrupt? And then what do we have to look at so that we don't put ourselves into that position again? Step one, first question we should ask, why are we in that position in the first place? Here's the bottom line. The reason you go bankrupt, it's a simple formula. Your expenses outrun your income, outweigh your income, outnumber your, whatever you want to say, your expenses are greater than your income. Think about it. Your expenses are $3,000 a month and you're only bringing in $2,000 a month. Maybe your expenses are $9,000 a month and you're bringing in $6,000 a month. This is why we go to credit cards and this is why people use credit cards. Ultimately, even though I love getting my credit card points, people use credit cards because they do not have the money to to afford what they're doing. And the problem, especially in the market today, more than ever with inflation and everything else, it's a tough situation. So you've got to ask yourself, why am I in that? Why am I in that position? The next step is it's coming up with a budget. Okay. You have to look at your expenses and at your income. You have to, to identify why am I in this position? Have you gone and spent money on stupid things? I mean, I'll give you one DoorDash. If you're struggling financially, there is no way on the planet earth you should be using DoorDash. If you're struggling financially, there's no way on the planet you should be Ubering anywhere. Now, if you say, well, Hesh, when I go out and drink heavily so I'm drunk out of my mind, I need to Uber. I congratulate for that. Congratulate you for that. that. That's a very responsible decision. You shouldn't be going out and drinking alcohol, okay? And I'm being serious about this stuff, okay? Uber, DoorDash, all of that stuff is pure garbage. If you're struggling financially, if you're not struggling financially and you've got the money and the residual income to do it, by all means, do DoorDash. Don't go to the grocery store. Have it delivered to your house. I talk to so many people on a daily basis who are struggling. And one of the first questions I ask them, I say, do you use DoorDash? And they'll say, yes. I'll say, that's the first thing to go out the window. You've got to identify why am I in this position? When you lay down your expenses and you start going through to see what have you charged on your credit cards this month? What have you charged out of your debit, debiting out of your bank account this month? You've got to start carving out the things that you're wasting money on. And sometimes, I'm not saying for the rest of your life, Sometimes you've got to make some tough financial decisions and for a period of six months, 12 months, three years, five years, you've got to live a little bit lean. And a lot of people say, Hesh, but you only live once and I've got to enjoy myself. 
okay, well, when you're dying of anxiety and stress, I've got news for you. What's going to kill you early in life is stress and anxiety and pressure. And 99% of that is controllable and well within your power. So being serious right now, the truth of the matter is, is write down your expenses, all of your credit card charges, all of your debits for the last six months. Highlight, I got a highlighter here. Highlight every single thing that honestly is wasteful spending, okay? And don't justify it either. Don't tell me, well, Hesh, I've got to take Uber because I've got to do this. Uber did not exist for hundreds, thousands, and millions of years. Don't tell me Uber is necessary, okay? But that's the first step. The second step, there's a series of questions that we have to ask. I've got them here in front of me. We're going to ask those questions. We'll throw them up on the screen as a matter of fact also, okay? Number one is how much debt do we have? Because we've got to figure out if bankruptcy is the right thing. Bankruptcy is not always the right thing. I've looked at some people where I'm like, you have $9,000 in debt. Don't go bankrupt for $9,000 in debt. I've looked at other people where I've said, you have so much debt, it's not even reasonable that you're gonna pay any of this stuff off, even if you negotiate it down for less. Bankruptcy is a very solid option, okay? Now, when you go talk to a bankruptcy attorney, no disrespect to the bankruptcy attorneys watching this video, of course, I, I can't say even of course, but a lot of times they're gonna shove it down your throat, of course, okay? But they're not charging a lot. Your bankruptcy, a lot of bankruptcies you'll see out there, there's a billboard. I drive down the highway in Cleveland, it's, I think, declare bankruptcy for $1,500 or $1,000 or something like that. So they don't really charge a lot on those. Um, but at the end of the day, don't say, well, hash my bankruptcy attorney told me to declare bankruptcy. You've got to look at this stuff yourself. You've got to search inward. First question, how much debt do you have? What's the dollar figure of the debt that we are talking about? That's step one. Second question, what are the monthly payments on that debt? What are the monthly payments on the debt? You've got to add up the monthly payments, okay? Got to know what that is. Third question, what is your monthly income? And it's the take-home income that I'm asking about. What's the monthly payments on the debt? What's the monthly take-home income? If you open up your credit card bills for the last six months and your bank account for the last six months, you could download all of your charges, thereby every month for six straight months, you'll see your expenses. If you look at your paychecks from work, look in your bank accounts, they get direct deposited. Look at what the deposits are, add those up monthly. You're gonna put side by side your expenses versus your income. First thing you do with that is carve out all the garbage. Take Amazon off of your phone. I'm being serious right now. Delete Amazon from your phone. Now don't tell me, Hesh, I save gas money because I, it's such BS. People will come up with so many ways to justify using Amazon, using DoorDash, and all the rest of that garbage. Now, again, if you're not struggling financially, that's fine. Use that stuff all day. I'm talking to the people who are considering going bankrupt. When I was on the verge of bankruptcy twice, two times I was on the verge of bankruptcy in the last 25 years of business, twice. When I was on the verge of bankruptcy, to if you even... To even if th if it existed back then, which I don't think DoorDash or Amazon truly as an application on my phone existed, but those things would have been the first things to go. Another question, what period of time will it take to pay off the debt? What period of time will it take to pay off the debt? You have to understand bankruptcy is going to affect you. It stays on your credit for 10 years. It doesn't stop you from getting a house or stopping you from buying a house for 10 years, stays on your credit for 10 years. It affects you big time. Now, I will say this, bankruptcies are not always, are not always bad. The stress it relieves you of. I always tell people, I'm really big on health, wellness, mental, psychological, uh, the psychological side of everything. Bankruptcies will lift a gigantic gorilla off of your back, 1,000%. But if you don't change the lifestyle that took you into the bankruptcy, after that bankruptcy is discharged, you're going to go straight down that path again. So you have to pay attention to that, okay? Another question is, is how will bankruptcy affect your job or your career? I know in my job, I'm a mortgage lender. If I went bankrupt, I would probably not be able to get a lending license. Now, maybe I could, but chances were better that I could not. So you've got to watch how will that affect your career and not just today into the future. It's something you have to consider. Another question is, now this is a big one. When you lay down your expenses and lay down your income, put them side by side, you're underwater $1,000 every single month. That leads to this question. Can I pick up a second job 
such that the supplemental income I make from that second job can cover that shortage which exists and I can start paying down the debt. You have to understand what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about making sacrifices, making commitments, uh, commitments and sacrifices for probably one to two to three years to do this stuff, maybe five years. And people say, oh my God, I don't wanna do this for five years. You're gonna relive the whole life again then. If you don't have the discipline it takes to tighten your belt and make tough decisions, because when you come out of that bankruptcy, this leads me actually to the third part of what I'm talking about here. So the first part was, what got us here? We gotta look at that. The second part is, we have to ask some questions to see, is bankruptcy the best option for me? Here's the third part, post-bankruptcy. Let's just say you end up going bankrupt. Let's say you don't go bankrupt. Post this occurring, post the bankruptcy, what moves do you have to make after the bankruptcy such that you don't have this happen again? Some of the questions we put there. How will you change your lifestyle? What will help you return to normal? How much money will it save you? How will your new financial picture look like and what mistakes have you made such that you won't make those again? I'll give you an example. I'm just telling you this right now. Let me know how much you spent on Amazon in the last 12 months. Let me know how much you spent on DoorDash, Uber, all of those, those convenience applications is what I call them. Those applications exist as a convenience. They're not critical to living. Now I've had people say, Hash, I don't need a cell phone. I'll tell you what, in today's time, it's the year 2022 right now, cell phones are required to exist in society. If you want to function in society today, I know I'm in the, I'm in sales. If you're in a sales job, you need a cell phone. You need a good cell phone too, by the way, okay? So at the end of the day, there's certain things that people will say they have to cut out. I mean, the cell phones aren't one of them. DoorDash and Uber are, okay? You've got to cut these out. After the bankruptcy, what sacrifices are, going, are you going to make? Turn the air conditioning off in the summertime. I know the house gets hot open the windows. Believe it or not, there was a time when air conditioners did not exist. By the way, one of my former uh, wrestlers I coach, one of my kids I call him, um, he's living in Germany right now. He said they don't have air conditioning in Germany. They have it in very few places. He said that really nobody has it. They think it gets you sick, so they just kind of don't have it. So believe it or not, other countries and most countries don't have air conditioning. Turn that off in the wintertime, or in the summertime. In the wintertime, Turn the temperature in the house down a little bit. Put a t-shirt on, put a sweatshirt on, put some sweatpants on. Make these small changes. You have to make these changes after you go bankrupt so you don't go bankrupt again. Can you imagine if by making those changes, you never have to go bankrupt in the first place and you could pay off that debt? You know what makes my story so good is I did not go bankrupt. And I always tell people, I don't define people by whether they went bankrupt or not. It's, I almost went bankrupt twice for God's sakes. But I will tell you this, I almost went bankrupt I restructured everything, I how I did everything I did business-wise and lifestyle-wise following the path that I'm telling you right now. And you know what? I got out of bankruptcy. And you wanna know where I am today? I have no debt, have a pretty successful company in a pretty good position financially. It took a lot of hard work. It took me, like, let me think about this one here. March of 2009, I almost went bankrupt. Um, I was buried in debt. I wasn't completely freed of it until 2019. 2019, yeah. It was 10 years of living lean, living thin. But do you wanna know something? I wasn't waking up every morning with anxiety. I was told by somebody one time, when I think about my bills, I become paralyzed and can't get out of bed. That was not me one single time. Now, if you wanna compare living, laying, opening your eyes and saying, if I think about my bills, I can't get out of bed, I don't consider that living. Me, I just cut out extra stuff. I didn't go out as much. I didn't go out to dinner. I didn't 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 do go places, do things. That wasn't miserable and bad. Those were sound financial decisions for the position I was in. So when it comes to should I declare bankruptcy? Is it the right time to declare bankruptcy? There's three steps. Step 1, what got me into this position? Step 2, is it the best decision? Step 3, after I'm done with bankruptcy, how do I have to make my lifestyle changes and what do I have to do in order to not go back into it? Those are the three questions to ask to determine if bankruptcy is right or wrong. And I wish you nothing but the best. I will tell you, there is life after uh, those types of financial situations and you are not defined by your financial situation. You're defined by how you react to it, how you handle it and how you come out of it.